Ghost of the Future, Issue 7. Silver goes to his parents' house, and Shadow says he'll be able to pick him up on his motorcycle when the break's over. Silver tells Sonic to stop following him, because he doesn't want to explain to his parents why he's friends with them. But it's not like he'll get in trouble with them because he's doing something wrong. Why doesn't Sonic correct him on inexplicably saying that he's 200 plus 12 years old? He's supposed to be 15. There's no excuse for this. Then as Sonic says goodbye, someone's really happy Silver's home and hugs him. It doesn't help with the first impressions than Benny's first panel. All of that text she says isn't even contained in a text bubble. It's in giant text that doesn't even keep to a consistent color, and it doesn't even spell gosh right. It's like it's trying to portray her as annoying on purpose. That stupid facial expression with its gaping open mouth doesn't help with endearing her to me either. And neither does the hair on the top of her head sticking straight up like that. If she's supposed to be his excited little sister and that's her appeal, why is she wearing pants instead of a skirt? Why does she have a boring brown tank top instead of a pink shirt or something? Someone other than her tells her to let him go, snarking that Venny might end up suffocating Silver before he'd make it inside. As if I needed any more reason to not like Venny, she just has to have such a suffocating hug that Silver's coughing afterwards. What normally a potential appeal to him having a sibling would be that he gets to enjoy a hug from them. It turns out that awful looking blonde character is Silver's sibling, Benny. Why does Silver have siblings? He only needed to have parents. That was it. I feel like completely skipping all the scenes with them. I've lost interest just from seeing them. I had to force myself to go back to this issue a second time to write my full impressions on these two characters. Because it's so clearly unnecessary that my interest is sapped at seeing them. All I thought on the first read of this was, why did the writer have so little common sense that all the personality was given to siblings Silver didn't need to have, instead of parents that needed to exist for him to be born? His parents are going to be generic blocks of wood. Why do his sisters get all this favoritism? The worst part is, they just look like horrible, amateurish fan characters. I think the comic ruined itself by changing the setting to Silver's house. I don't care anymore. Maybe I have characters that look good if you want me to care about forcing myself to read all the dialogue. All they're doing is talking. Why in the world do neither of them have the same fur color as Silver? It doesn't make them feel like they're actually his siblings. It would be common sense not to do this. Venny's an outright blonde. At least Cicely is blue in a way that's closer to Silver's color. They both look so unlike Silver that they feel more like random Sonic OCs plopped into his life that just reminded me that it's a fan comic. They could be adopted and make more sense. Even their names are embarrassing because they can't just have normal names. They have to have special snowflake names like Venny and Cicely. Cicely's personality is easy to tolerate right away because she's deadpan and snarky like me. Out of nowhere, Benny insists on quoting Macbeth, asking when her family will meet again, in thunder, lightning, or rain. Because apparently she wasn't overly wacky enough. She acted like a younger girl, and now she's talking about a play that's only talked about in high school. This personality would work better for a little girl. She says she's a shoe in for a drama club. At least that tries to give her a hobby. It's good to give characters hobbies. It makes it feel like they actually have a life outside of being related to Silver. They're not just satellite characters. Benny's asked if she did her weekend chores because she was supposed to get them done before Silver got home. And apparently Cicely cares enough to ask that. Benny wants to put them off until the last minute, which is the first time she's been relatable, instead of off-putting. And she says her parents are coming home tonight. They couldn't even be there to greet their son the minute he showed up at their house? Why is it written this way? They're the ones who insisted on Silver coming back. If there was anybody that people would have been looking forward to meeting in Silver's family, it'd obviously be Silver's parents. Not siblings that he never had before. Instead, all they cared about was visiting old friends and won't bother coming home until tomorrow. Cicely pressures Vinny to do her chores, and she's been put in charge. I guess she doesn't want to get in trouble with her parents for not getting her to do her chores. What are those chores, though? Who knows, that'd be effort to establish. And Vinny annoys me again by pointlessly misquoting Macbeth again as she leaves. As that's totally realistic. 
It would have made more sense if Cicely was Silver's mom, so there'd be actual appeal to her existing. It would have suited her level-headed personality more, but no. Silver's tired and says he'll be in his room, and Cicely goes out of her way to ruffle his hair as he looks annoyed. Because once again, God forbid we get made to feel like Silver having siblings is a good thing, but I'm actually appreciating affection from them. She says she'll be in the garage, so that's gonna be her personality. Shadow's drawn horribly as he thinks about Sonic taking his time. I don't know why it was drawn that way, since it's such an obvious bad idea. After he considers going home without Sonic, with his swearing being censored when this is the same comic that had a needlessly gory first page, so make up your mind, Sonic says he has a big favor to ask of him. And then a bunch of comic space and time is wasted on us because Shadow's silent and asks what's in it for him, and Sonic says he'll let him have the TV remote all weekend and will give him two more favors later. And he says he'll give him three more favors on a contract. He says he'll do whatever he wants because he really needs his help. They don't come off like people who've been friends for 200 years here. Why the hell didn't he just tell him what he needed help with immediately? This story was boring enough. Sonic says that he just remembered something important that Decal told him about a couple weeks ago. Because of the Chaos Emerald Silver in him found, the balance of power that sustains Dark Gaia is getting out of whack. Because Dark Gaia needs to be sustained with a balance of power now. Suddenly Dark Gaia is a being that controls the world's energy, as opposed to just existing in the Earth's core for no reason, like in the game. And it's getting really mad in the Earth's core. Why though? It's supposed to be asleep for thousands of years! Isn't that why it doesn't instantly break out of the planet? If it was awake the whole time it was trapped in the planet, it would go insane from boredom. How would it know that anything changed after it was sealed away? The fact that Sonic just remembered this thing he was told about off-screen only makes it feel even more arbitrary. And if it's arbitrary, I'm not going to be able to take it seriously. Dark Guy is supposed to be unconscious right now. Sonic has to tell Shadow who Dark Guy even is, implying that this universe didn't have Sonic and Leash happen in it. Sonic's upset at having to give Shadow a month of TV control rights. I know Shadow's an anti-hero, but why does he have to be written to demand huge favors from what's been his best and only friend for centuries in exchange for him helping to save the world? Which Maria would have obviously wanted him to do. He didn't demand a bunch of favors in exchange for saving the world in SA2. Apparently he's just that cynical now. Sonic says that according to Decal, he needs to give Dark Gaia a ritual sacrifice, or it'll shatter the planet. Since when does Dark Gaia accept ritual sacrifices? He's an evil final boss that Sonic has to seal away by attacking him with Super Sonic's power, not by doing a ritual. And tonight is the last night that's possible to do the ritual. So did she read his mind, so she knows exactly when it's going to be too late? This just seems silly. Maybe if it was a brand new god invented on the spot, or even a Fleetway reference like the Dark One or Vichma, it'd feel less out of place because then, with a new character, you could do whatever you wanted with them. He could be in the core with Dark Gaia. I get the Dark Gaia is technically a god, so he's being treated like one, but all it's there for is to be a Sonic Unleashed final boss. It was dealt with. I have a question. Why didn't Decal do the ritual? Why did she leave it up to Sonic? Sonic can do it when he's a ghost, so why not her? She would have cared about the world and saved it long before he'd need to do it. She'd know he didn't do the ritual yet. Benny wastes my time talking to herself, annoying the fuck out of me by quoting Shakespearean plays for no reason other than to be wacky when she's worried about Silver being mopey. And eventually she wants to help snap Silver out of it. Meanwhile, Cicely looks at Shadow's motorcycle and reveals in her thoughts that she knows all about it and thinks it's a paragon of engineering to the point where she can't focus. That's a surprise. Thank goodness Cicely knows a lot about motorcycles and technology in general, because it gives her another personality trait and tries to make it potentially useful. She'd be boring if she was just the serious level-headed character. She wants to get a better look at it. But what'll be the point of showing us that? She'll just bore us to death with Technobabble. We already got that she knew a lot about technology from this page. But there's no way you can replace Tails with her. She's an OC! If you wanted to have an engineer character in the future, it would have been less forced to have a pre-existing character instead of a new character made as an apology and workaround for the fact that it's taking place in Silver's future. Tails could be here instead, and he could be an alternate dimension in Tails. I had to force myself to give this a second chance for the sake of the video. 
And it looks like only Sicily's worth giving a chance. Then he's even more annoying when I'm paying attention to her. If I wanted to read about a female engineer Sonic character, I'd rather read about Wave the Swallow. Or even a more competent Marine. Because at least she's from the games. When I first read this issue, I skipped almost all of the dialogue of Silver's sisters and took several issues to bother paying attention to them. They only mattered to me when they started doing stuff. That's how bad looking and clearly unnecessary they are on the first impression. But I'll admit, they did grow on me. Because the writer at least tried to give them memorable personalities. Even Venny ends up becoming useful. But it's immediately obvious that Sicily should have been Silver's mother. Venny could have been a guy. Venny could have been his father. Speaking of someone who read most of the comic, I did end up warming up to these characters. But it'll always be shocking how much focus they have. Because it's the person who went on to write the official Sonic comic. You'd think most Sonic fans would know that it's kind of an off-putting taboo to have a huge focus on OCs in a fanfiction. Like, this is rule number one that you're not supposed to do. Silver's sister knows a lot about motorcycles, to the point where she scolds Shadow for letting his motorcycle go because it could break at any moment. And she says that she's not letting him leave until she has a good look at it. She says she wants to check the Chaos Drive. And apparently, it needs to be replaced every two years. And she has a spare that'll fit. And Child's pretty attached to and overprotective of his motorcycle, asking if he can watch. She thinks this is the Chaos Drive she needs to complete her project. And it's old and has to be recharged, and she can't wait to see his eyes. Sonic tells Silver that the world's gonna try to destroy them. As if the universe being in danger of destruction just because the emeralds weren't in it wasn't bad enough. I can't take this seriously. Sonic fortunately asks Silver if he's okay, and Silver, who's introduced to the franchise as someone desperate to save the future, completely ignores Sonic when he talks about an apocalypse scenario and says that he can't handle any weirdness right now, just because Blaze is mad at him. This is not Silver, and Sonic apologizes. This might as well be an OC character that just happens to have Silver's powers. At least then it'd be honest. Sonic hopes he can get something for the sacrifice. I hope it's Benny. You know you fucked up when you have the audience hoping that with what's supposed to be a sympathetic character. It's not like she's going out of her way to be useful. Silver hears something making a lot of noise in the backyard. Annoys me by thinking of his powers as powers that don't work, which nobody thinks of Silver's powers as. And he yells at his friends for doing a ritual and saying stuff to summon Gaia outside the house. And then a monster gets summoned. I'm so bored. This comes out of nowhere just to have a story about it. Why does Sonic know all these words to say for the ritual? I guess Tikal told him. I guess he had to go to the Tikal dimension to learn the words to say a minute ago. What's even happening here? It's so dark. Shadow smacks Sonic to snap him out of it because for some reason he has to be snapped out of it. And he says that that thing is a dark guy monster. Because why come up with your own creative ideas when you can steal them from Sonic Unleashed instead? Everyone loved the plot elements of that game. It wasn't weird at all. Well, I already read the reboot. I've had enough of Sonic Unleashed. At least the other ramp comic doesn't get lazy enough to steal plot points from the latest Sonic games. It stayed in the settings of the Archie comic the whole time, which made it feel like it was a part of an actual world all on its own, instead of getting distracted by the latest Sonic games. Doing this just takes me out of it, making me think that these Unleashed and Secret Rings plot points only showed up because the games just came out at that point and the writer was lazy. It makes even Flynn look more talented because he didn't need to fall back on Sonic Unleashed and Secret Rings as a crutch back then. He just had the characters stay in Echidnapolis and focus on their freedom fighting. These Unleashed and Secret Rings plot points only seem to show up because of Metalogic. I'd rather a comic take place in its own universe instead of being able to steal stuff from the game at the drop of a hat with no foreshadowing when it's not supposed to be in the same universe as the games. Because it's not canon to it anyways. This doesn't keep me invested, it just confuses me. Sonic apologizes for using the backyard for the summoning and says the ritual worked. Shadow says that the ice cream offering is not going to cut it because it's on the ground over there. It turns out the Dark Guy monsters want to go for the nearest object to power, and that would be the Chaos Emerald. So Dark Guy's power contaminates the Emerald in Sonic. So he looks more like the Werehog. Which makes less sense because that's his soul. There's no body for Dark Guy energy to mutate to the Werehog this time. There's no DNA to mutate. He tells Silver to hurry and get a new offering while he'll distract the monster. 
Why would any offering entice it more than an emerald if it somehow thinks an emerald it's never going to use for anything will be enticing in the first place? It's not like it wants to take over the world. He goes Werehog and grabs the monster, and Silver relatably hopes he won't break anything. It is kind of funny that Shadow and Silver are seriously going to offer the monsters some ice cream. It's creative too, and it makes sense because they don't have any other option. Shadow takes it completely seriously, saying that they'll need more flavorings, better toppings, and hot fudge. But it's surprising that the comic's trying to be lighthearted at this point when even the writer called it a dark drama comic. It just makes me wish the entire comic was this tone. At least being lighthearted is harmless. Well, if you're trying to be dark, it's gonna be horribly frustrating and tedious if it only goes down that road because of forced writing. The comic space gets wasted as they talk with each other even more about how exactly they should go about making the best possible ice cream for him. Why would the monster accept ice cream that he'll just eat and immediately lose it over a chaos emerald? He'd obviously eat it and then go back to wanting the emerald. I'm really not interested in this issue if I don't care about really talking about the dialogue. I was in this apathetic to some other comics. Silver ends up knowing more about scooping ice cream than Shadow, and says that they need dairy for a sundae, not sorbet, which anyone should know. The monster says chocolate chip cream sundae supreme, reminding me of chip because of the whole ice cream thing. At least that makes Dark Guy feel like a proper parallel to Light Guy. Is he gonna turn to chip? Yep. At least he disappears without saying anything. So, he was Light Guy corrupted by Dark Guy? Or he was like uh, corrupted in the first place? Why didn't he just ask for ice cream in the first place if he knew well enough to know exactly what the type of ice cream was called? Somehow, when he's never experienced human society before. Back to normal, Sonic thanks Shadow. Silver's upset that the house was messed up. And he whines that he can't do anything right because he sucks in this comic. Who would ever imagine Silver to be like this? This is trying to ruin the character for me. At least Sonic was nice to him and reassured him. He says he'll get the place cleaned up in a second. But fuck logic apparently, because Shadow says there'll be more help if they leave and warps away with Chaos Control, when obviously he had a duty to clean up the mess he made and not get Silver in trouble with his family and ruin his life, because Silver will be blamed for it because he won't just tell his family what was going on. This isn't good writing at all. How is this fun? He never explains why he won't just tell people what Sonic's doing with him, even though he could just show Sonic to people and immediately they believe him. It's not fun to see a character with no communication skills. It's not like Sonic's invisible to most people. At least his siblings decide to help him clean up the mess. And Silver thanks them as Benny has her hand on his shoulder. This issue was by Evan Stanley and was easily the least enjoyable one yet. I do not care about these unnecessary fan characters of self-indulgence. It's not like they were first introduced in an action scene where they were doing a whole bunch of useful, cool things. The writer clearly needed to have them be Silver's parents so I'd actually have a reason to care about them. Silver never needed to have siblings. They look terrible, so I have even less reason to read their dialogue. It's just an eyesore. This is really testing my patience more than anything else has. The plot is too out of nowhere for me to take seriously right away. Sonic just now remembers something that Decole told him weeks ago off-screen. He needs to do a ritual to appease Dark Gaia or he'll shatter the planet. All because the emeralds aren't in the planet. And I guess it's because they just got a few emeralds. Huh? So Sonic has to fight with the monster he summoned. It makes a mess in Silver's house. And eventually, Silver makes a great ice cream dish and appeases it and it turns into chip. How did it know English? Too bad Sonic and Shadow warp away instead of cleaning up the mess with super speed. It's just frustrating that Silver is so dedicated to not letting anyone know about his business with Sonic. He never explains why, 